The number one mistake that bands make is to think that they can outsmart a system. Like, they think, well, if we get involved in this sort of professional way of doing things, this sort of mainstream way of doing things, like if we get an account, if we get a, a manager and a booking agent and a record label and a promotions person, you know, a public relations person, and, you know, we pay all of these people to, to facilitate different aspects of our career, somehow we can outsmart the pure mathematics of that and and keep our heads above water and that system exists to support itself it doesn't exist to support the, the bands so that's the biggest sort of business mistake that bands can make is to think that that this system can that they can just sort of jump into this system and somehow avoid what appears to be pure mathematics, you know, that money comes in in one place and then it gets spread out to all these other people who don't actually earn the money, they're just doing things and charging a tax in, in, in the process. Um, the way to avoid that is to do as much of the as much of the administration and as much of the the sort of support for your band uh, doing as much of that yourself as possible because then you're keeping all of the money and you're keeping control of all the decisions. You won't ever make, you won't ever be in the position of having someone make a decision based on his self-interest rather than your interest. I guess in almost every circumstance I'm, I'm more comfortable doing something myself than I am asking somebody else to do it. So I would say it applies almost completely, you know. I, I work in a recording studio that I built for that purpose. Um, I, I work in other studios when asked to, but I do all my own engineering. I tend to bring my own equipment, sell a lot of my own equipment with me. Um, within the band shellac, we do as much as we possibly can ourselves, and I still feel like Doing things yourself is valuable in, in its own sake because it teaches you more about the circumstances that you work in and it teaches you more about all the different aspects of your existence. I've tried I've also tried to learn from other people's mistakes. Like I've seen people other people do things and seen how much trouble it is for them to do it that way and I've tried to come up with solutions to those problems that didn't have the same drawbacks. Make everything about your existence as a band comfortable and sustainable and, and pleasant. You know, you should enjoy it. And if you find yourself doing things that you don't enjoy because you're obliged to do them, then you've made a mistake and it's too late. You have to be conscious of that stuff and not make those mistakes. It is possible to teach yourself basically everything you need to know, but it does require some studious nature. Like you have to read, you have to take notes, you have to experiment doing your experiments in coordination with your reading so that you're not just randomly farting around, you're, you're learning or reinforcing your learning. People, somebody might want to use a song in a movie, for example, and in, in the conventional music business, um, that's, that's just seen, that's seen as a money-making opportunity, like, oh, they want to use our song? great, how much money do we get? And for us it's more a matter of, you know, they want, to, they want to associate our band in some way, they want to associate our band with their movie. And unless that's an association that we're comfortable with ourselves, then there, there's no incentive large enough for us to want to do it, you know we'll just carry on working at our day jobs for a while and make money and pay rent. You know, we don't have to use music as a tool to generate money. Um, I think that's an option that's open to everyone. I think everyone could, could treat music that way. It's, in a way, a hubristic presumption to think that you can be purely a musician and that the rest of the world will pay you for the privilege of hearing your music. I think that that's 
a, a little bit naive in some cases and you know grossly overstating your importance in other cases and in, in any case it makes it harder for you to do things that you're comfortable and happy with if you if you have to use your art as a way of generating your income then you you're inexorably linking your lifestyle and your personal comfort with the decisions that you make for your art but I see music as something like say skiing or painting you know something that you can enjoy doing for its own sake and you should very very few people should expect to do it professionally very few people should expect to do it as a career and most of the tension within any artistic endeavor comes from a mistaken presumption that anyone who wants to can be a professional artist you know and that's where a lot of discontent comes from a lot of a lot of people's dissatisfaction with how they're treated comes not from the fact that they weren't treated fairly but from the fact that they carry expectations about how they should be treated and the easiest way to avoid that disappointment is just to maintain a realistic perspective on on music or, or art or whatever it is that you do as your creative expression you maintain a perspective on that where that allows you to enjoy doing it like the, the, the obvious example is if you have a booking agent and he can book you a series of meaningless shows playing in places where nobody particularly wants to see you where you have to make really long drives but he can get reasonable money for those shows then he will book those shows for you and you will be obliged to play them and you will be obliged to go through all the hassle that it takes to do them so that the booking agent can make his commission in the process of doing that you as a band may not earn any money at all you may not be playing in front of a sympathetic audience and you you may not be helping your situation in the slightest but you're going through the motions you're pretending to do these things for the sake of somebody else whereas if you book your own shows you book your own series of shows you can play in places where you know people will be receptive where you know that you'll be playing in front of a sympathetic audience and where and you can organize the tour in a way that's not going to be too tiresome for you you know if it's a passion first and foremost you will enjoy it and it will be valid and if you expect it to be your job as well eventually I think you will come to resent it in the way that most people resent their jobs that's just one example the other obvious examples are you know are things like uh, trying to get more attention for your band by having publicity people trumpet your band and try to get attention from other people uh, th doing that costs money and it doesn't generate any money it generates publicity which does not necessarily translate into money so you're you're spending money for the sake of having yourself thrust under people's noses and as a as a consumer of music as a fan when a band is sort of thrust at me in this fashion and wiggled in front of me like a severed head then it it makes makes me hate them you know it makes me less sympathetic to whatever they're trying to do if you can learn the same lesson by horribly disfiguring yourself in a fire or watching somebody else be horribly disfigured uh, I think it you know it stands to reason that if you if you can understand somebody else's mistake and not make it you're ahead of the game 